Marketing surrounds our life. The truth of the matter is, as uncomfortable as it may be for some people, we're really in the psychological manipulation business. Everywhere we go, we see advertisements, leaflets, listen to radio ads. The TV is basically a big ad. And nowadays, YouTube is starting to get annoying with their unskippable ads. The modern generation has created the influencers who are promoting nearly everything in a way that a more naive fan would consider genuine. Marketing is manipulating our thoughts, organs, and feelings. Are you sure you're aware of everything? Marketing is all about influence and a potential buyer's decision. Have you ever seen a huge sign on a store that said something like 50% off or even more? And when you went in, the prices weren't that low. I bet most of you have bought a product because it was discounted. Black Friday might be one of the most famous examples. The Black Friday frenzy, an estimated 116 million shoppers hitting the stores. Shoppers fighting over garments at this Victoria's Secret in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Deep discounts triggering a free-for-all. Bargain hunters at this Georgia Walmart wrestling over pots and pans. The commotion veering out of control at an Alabama mall. Shoppers scrambling for safety. While you can find pretty good deals, unfortunately there are sellers who often use different techniques to scam you basically. A heavy discount doesn't necessarily mean that the product became very cheap compared to its original price, it only became cheaper compared to the last listed price of it. For example, I really wanted to buy a camera, which was what, $600. A few days before Black Friday, it suddenly became $750. Then, on Black Friday, it had a 20% discount, so it became $600 again, which means the price was the same, but it said it was discounted, which could easily encourage an unprepared buyer. Expert heuristic evaluations. When you are watching an expert who can be a certified doctor, but in the consumer's eyes, it could be a tech or beauty YouTuber. When you want to buy something that you are not really invested in, you are most likely going to watch a review about it. Many companies are paying for their products to get good reviews on the internet. You believe someone who knows what they are talking about, but how do you know if that's their own opinion? or it was written by marketing people. You thought you could always trust your fellow users on the internet. This is completely unethical and this is not true to every company, but sellers do buy reviews. When you see a good Google rating, that must be meaning something, right? Yes, it should mean that it's trustworthy. Unfortunately, you could easily buy five-star reviews that make your aesthetic way better. Also, it can ruin your business, but when it comes to manipulating customers, it should be on the list. You think that ads don't influence your subconscious, but that's the point of it. You think it doesn't affect you, but it does. Have you ever seen a great commercial which left you with a positive feeling? You just showed the video to your friends because you found it funny, entertaining, or you might think that you sympathize with the video itself, but in reality you know exactly which product was it about, and the commercial that you liked so much just gave you a positive opinion about it. Let's say you like the commercial of this specific beer. The next time you're in the store, you you're gonna have a positive attitude towards that type of beer because you connect it with great memories in your head. No wonder alcohol companies are paying brutal amount of money to sponsor a festival, which is the center of fantastic lifelong memories. You're gonna associate the best concert of your life with that specific beer you were drinking. Same when your commercial has a music that you like or is connected to an activity that you enjoy. Have you ever seen Heineken Vado? It's very simple, right? The brand name? A very low-key logo, green color, just like most beers. Have you ever noticed that the E's in the word Heineken are slightly tilted? The word itself would be a bit boring and harsh, so they tilted the E, which made the leather smile. Now the whole logo is smiling. Just a very good, smooth, clean, refreshing, crisp beer. This is something you probably haven't even noticed, but your subconscious could have chosen for you. Did you think going to a commercial casting and getting the role is all about your attractiveness and your acting skills? Marketing specialists choose people who look more trustworthy than others. This might sound weird, but it's all psychology. For example, people with higher faces are more trustworthy than people with wider ones. This is something you would never think about, but the marketing industry actually pays attention to it. FOMO, the fear of missing out. Ever since you were a little kid, you hated being left out of conversations, activities, or anything you thought was fun. You liked it, 
because you were afraid you couldn't take part in it. If you are planning on buying something and you are hesitating, the best strategy a webshop could do is to eliminate the most valuable asset of your consumer behavior your time. Suddenly a red sentence appears on your screen, only one left in stock, only one ticket left at this price, buy it. Otherwise you will miss out on a great purchase or the traveling of your life. That one little sign has the ability to decide your next step, which will most likely be buying. If you haven't realized yet, the whole concept of telling you what to buy is not telling it to you with 100% transparency. We don't like to be told what to do. So that's why marketing make it seem like you have an opportunity to choose on your own, but in reality they are manipulating you. Some commercials, especially ones with colognes, are, tend to be pretty sexual. When in real life, pulling up a cologne doesn't necessarily mean that many women are going to arrive and make love with you. We wish, my fellow man, we wish. The idea that a product can get you laid might seem ridiculous for the first time, but it will play with your subconscious. We like sex, which means if your product is associated with it and can improve your sex life, you will like it more, even if you thought the ad was lame. As a default setting, we all have personalized ads. You've probably searched for many things on the internet and unfortunately your browser remembers that. It's a bit creepy, but for example, Google Chrome stores your data to show ads that are suitable for you. If you go to adsettings.google.com, you can find pretty accurate information about yourself. Ah yeah, my favorite, the grocery store. Think of it as a huge illusion where everything was built for a reason. When you arrive, you're offered to take a basket with yourself to make the whole process a lot easier. It's so much more comfortable to buy an extra jam or water when you have more free space. If you go in, you can't change your mind and go out the same route. Well, it's a funny thing, Renee. What's happened is you've entered, you're welcome, but you're also not allowed to leave. As you can see, the metaphorical doors are closing. Well, I could go out the exit. Well, you could, but you're not going to because you've already invested in the relationship with the supermarket. If you really want to escape from there, you should go through the whole store, through the people and go away. Many people don't like this social situation, so they would rather buy something. Supermarkets stimulate your senses. When you step into a store, you see bright colors, lots of light. They play music that calms you down to make you stay there as long as and buy as many things as possible. Every item has a beautifully photoshopped picture on it. These visuals make you buy those kinds of stuff. There are discounts everywhere, which I've already talked about, is the same thing. You feel like you are in a once in a lifetime opportunity, you have to buy the specific product for such a low price, although you haven't even planned on buying it when you left your home. The placement is always intentional. Everything you see in a supermarket is not coincidental. When they want to sell something to their target audience, they put it eye level, depending on who they want to sell it. They put more expensive, high tier products at an adult's eye level. But when they want to attract the kids, they have to put the chocolate at their eye levels. The thing is, food manufacturers create tests, so they know everything about the average customer behavior. They know which shelves are going to attract your eyes. Also, they know about our impulse purchases. That's the reason they put stuff around the cashier. That's where you are waiting, where you get bored and start to buy things purely because of that one moment. That's the time when children start to ask their mom for different types of chocolates, sports magazines, candies. It's all planned. Most customers buy dairy products, cheese, milk, yogurt. They are one of the most common products to buy in a store. These products are probably pretty far from the entrance of your local store. These are the products that you would buy no matter what. You've already thought about buying it before even entering the shop. They don't have to convince you to buy cheese, but they can trick you into going through the longest path in the store to get it. This increases the chances of you spotting a product and buying it. What is common in these cereal designs? Yes, they are all for children, but let's have a closer look. When a little kid passes by, he looks up to all these cereals. Guess what? The cereal characters are looking down at him, making direct eye contact with the kids, which increases sympathy, of course. Usually the freshly baked goods or the vegetables are pretty close to the entrance. The goods stimulate your smells, which makes you hungry, which leads you to buying more stuff. If the vegetables are close, they want to load you up with the healthy feeling, so when you go further, you are psychologically more willing to buy junk food. Have you ever been to a supermarket that just didn't make sense? You have to go through the whole store just to get a couple of food. 
but you've probably left with more. Sometimes these stores want you to get lost in them, which makes you spend extra time in there finding those specific products. You are probably fed up with the cashier asking you to get a loyalty card. Well, these cards store very important data about your customer behavior. Therefore, it can be used for marketing purposes. Basically, they use you for their real life experiments. And last but not least, the lanes, those narrow checkout lanes. You didn't really pay attention to your buying process. You threw different stuff in there and you realized you don't necessarily need that extra bag of chips, for example. Well, it's too late. You can't escape the lane because you are already in it and you are up next. Maybe you should put a chewing gum in there to make you forget about your stupid purchase, right? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this longer format. It took me a lot of time to make, so I would be very happy if you could give me a like and maybe subscribe to my channel and just watch my other videos. Thank you very much. See you next time. I was Tom Carp. Bye.